Hi, I'm Greg Trasick with WebH Solutions, and this is part two of our look at building AngularJS applications with Grunt.js. When we left off in part one, we had used Yeoman to create the project. Now let's pick up at that point and take a look at the Grunt file. We'll use the Grunt serve command to start up a test server and try out the app. After that, we'll look at using the Bower package manager to add the Bootstrap framework to the project. All right. And away we go. It's going to create some template files and then run the install task on both npm and bower to actually pull in the dependencies that we call out. It asked us uh, if we want to overwrite package.json. We said yes. We'll just fast forward a bit till all the downloads are over. And when all is said and done, we have uh, an application here. So there's an app uh, folder, and if we have a look in there, we have uh, some HTML, we have um, uh, some scripts, we have some views. Uh, if we look at our package.json, there's a list of all the development time dependencies that we have. There's no runtime dependencies because we're not running this as a, a Node.js file. Now, one of the things that Yeoman generated was the grunt file, and that is in the file gruntfile.js, which we should be able to pick up. We have a look at gruntfile.js. Let's go old school here. And we can see that it is well, module.exports. That suggests to me that it's a common JS module that is going to be called from um, inside, um, well, could be called from inside node.js, is actually uh, going to be initialized by grunt.js itself. So it provides a function which takes as its parameter the grunt runtime and then makes some calls on the grunt API to configure grunt. Most of the um, configuration you can see is in this init config method and then the definitions of what we can do are in our down here, our task definitions. This is all configuration for the task definitions. Okay. We can see here we've got uh, register task, serve for instance, defines a task called serve. So now that we have a grunt file, we have the actual build system, what can we do with it? Well, we'll take a look at a few uh, sample tasks, serve, test, build, and default. Grunt serve is going to be kind of a critical um, linchpin of our, our development. It's going to set up a local web server, uh, which will get us away from having to use an Apache web server or something else. It sets up a local web server, opens a browser window for us, and then sets up a watch. So it watches files for changes and then reloads the browser. Let's go have a look at that. Okay, we just... Okay, so we're going to do two things here. Uh, one, I'm just going to create a new window here in my terminal window. So I have two terminals here. And in the first one, I'm going to run grunt serve. So we invoke grunt with the command line options, just grunt serve. The serve is just calling out the name of a task that we want to have run. And let's watch what happens when we do that. Okay, and we have a web page that is opened up. Now let's just take a look at that, or watch that. Uh, this is actually the sample template application that we had. And what I'm going to try and do is just arrange the windows here so that we can see both of these at once, like so. And if we go have a look at the application, we'll see we have the app. App is the um, main or home directory for the application. Let's go have a look in there. And we see inside there, there's index.html. And if we have a look at index.html, that is, guess what? Our 
uh, home page. Um, and what you'll see, if we look down here a little bit, is that we're using the Angular idea of having an Angular include, ng include, with a view slash main.html, which kind of suggests that this is kind of our template file and we don't really want to uh, go editing that file. And you know, that's um, Yeoman's kind of starting point and you can customize that if you want, but let's just follow that and, and we'll go ahead and uh, edit views.main. or view slash main.html. So this is the actual page that's being displayed. You may recognize the div classic of Jumbotron suggesting that it's really laid out for the bootstrap framework. We'll plug that in a little bit later, but first let's just um, uh, do some editing on here because I want to show you a side effect of the grunt.surf. Uh, here's the text HTML5 boilerplate as a professional front end template. And of course that corresponds to that text there. Well, why don't we just get rid of that and we'll insert uh, a little, you know, here is a sample application with grunt. Okay, and I suppose just to be sort of complete, I'll close that off with slash p. And let me just save that. And let's watch what happens when I save that. Uh, of course, I'm in VI, so Control W. Well, look at that. The browser went ahead and updated itself. Okay, what actually happened is the Grunt serve set up a watch, and it also, when it served out the page, served out a little extra script that maintains communication with the server, waiting for a signal to reload. Uh, so basically, we can just go ahead and edit files in our um, app directory here, and the um, uh, browser will automatically update. And you can see here we're uh, loading up uh, localhost 9000, so it's actually using a localized web server that's being served by node.js in our desktop. Now, originally, uh, the Yeoman Angular generator really wanted to use the Bootstrap uh, CSS framework. We said no when we did the initial uh, generation. But let's add it in after the fact. And what I'm going to do is use the Bower Package Manager. And I'm going to say Bower install dash save. That's going to update the metadata, update the list of packages that we're depending on. And I'm going to have it installed Bootstrap. And it will create a Bootstrap folder under a folder called Bower Components. It will also update the file Bower.json. Let's go have a look at that in action. So as we can see, um, GruntServe brought up a web browser and everything's good, except it's not really very attractive. So let's do a vi app slash views slash main.html. And you may recognize some of these tags as, you know, class equals jumbotron, class equals button, button large, button success, etc. The demo that the Angular generator set up really wants to use the Bootstrap framework, but we said no to the Bootstrap framework when we first ran it. Let's change that now. We'll go ahead and install Bootstrap. And we'll do that using the Bower Package Manager. So I'm going to say Bower install dash dash save Bootstrap. And Bower is going to go ahead and go get the Bootstrap package for us from the Git repository and install it. And it's also going to update the Bower.json, which is what the dash dash save accomplishes. Now we can also see that Bower has figured out that we need jQuery to run Bootstrap properly. In this case, we actually don't because Angular uh, doesn't use the jQuery portion of it. But we're just going to use the uh, plain old bootstrap uh, CSS, so not a big deal. And there we go. Now if we look in Bower Components, we'll see that we have a bootstrap uh, folder. that has a dist directory 
that contains the CSS that we're actually after. Now you may have noticed that the web browser did a little flash there. It updated. Uh, but the appearance didn't really seem to change. If we have a look at the index.html though, which is the actual main page, we can see here if we scroll down, maybe I'll get the right window, we can see if we scroll down, there was actually an addition to this, which is this. Uh, we have bootstrap uh, dot js added in but not the cascadable style sheet why is that well there's a little bit of a, a change to the bower packaging specification recently and uh, the bootstrap group hasn't really figured out how to deal with it or, or hasn't figured out the right way to go about it uh, bootstrap is shipped as a set of um, style sheet source files for the less uh, style sheet compiler it also ships as a convenience artifact the compiled version of those um, style sheets. And Bauer now requires that only one of those artifacts is actually called out as the main artifact and, you know, we don't have the right one. So we're just going to cheat a little bit. The resolution to the underlying problem is probably going to come out in a couple of months and I don't want to uh, uh, suggest something that uh, is going to change. We're just going to cheat a little bit for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the um, compiled style sheets. Uh, dist slash CSS slash dot min dot CSS. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit and copy the compiled style sheet from the Bower components bootstrap distribution CSS folder into my app slash styles folder. And let me just grab that name as well. And now I'm going to edit the uh, index.html. I'm just going to add a call out in here into my um, styles area. Oops. Eh. Back to there. And I'm just going to add a call out in my styles area here uh, with link relationship equals style sheet href equals styles slash I'm just going to drop that bootstrap in there. All right. Now watch what happens when I save that. We should get the browser updating and there we go. A little nicer um, presentation of the uh, default application. Now, just so we know what happened there, the initial uh, edition of our uh, bootstrap JavaScript, what happened is that when we, um, when we ran the Bower Package Manager, if we have a look, there's a bower.json. That's the metadata that describes what packages we've actually loaded. And in that, we can see it now has uh, bootstrap package. But more to the point, the grunt serve had set up a watch. One of the things it's watching is bower.json. So when that bower.json gets updated as a result of us installing a Bower package, that will automatically run through the compiling, automatically invokes a um, module called wiredep, which goes and plugs that into our um, index.html. And Wiredep knows to look for uh, spots down here where we have our build.js uh, called out. So Wiredep will plug in Bower's dependencies into this area for uh, Bower.js. If the Bower package were uh, set up correctly, 
it would also have put the CSS into this section called Bower CSS. But like I said, there's a little bit of contention between um, uh, the Bootstrap group and the Bower group right now. That'll get sorted out sure, soon enough, I'm sure. So there you have it, running grunt.js as a build tool and a templating tool for AngularJS applications using um, the Angular generator and Yeoman. Stay tuned and uh, check back at this uh, site later on. We'll post another entry soon enough that uh, shows us how to create a controller in AngularJS and then eventually build a production-ready uh, output of our project. On your screen, there's a list of resources. Uh, there's links to the knowledge base articles that uh, this presentation is based on. Also a link to our AngularJS training course, WA2425. I have been Greg Trasic with WebH Solutions. Thanks very much. I hope to see you soon.